to the war in Ukraine next, where the country's top general says his forces have suffered several setbacks on the battlefield. And Russian troops are advancing in the eastern Donetsk region. Armed Forces leader Alexander Sirsky says Moscow is now attacking Ukraine along the entire front line and has achieved tactical successes by concentrating its efforts. Russian strikes near Ocheritene, a village in Ukraine's eastern Donetsk region, where fighting has been raging for days. Moscow claims it largely now controls the area. Russian forces have advanced through at least half a dozen villages on the eastern front since capturing the town of Avdiivka in February. They're taking advantage of their superior troop numbers and ammunition stocks, while Kyiv waits for fresh supplies. Ukraine's army leaders have conceded that Moscow has had, quote, tactical successes. In posts made on social media, the armed forces commander-in-chief, Oleksandr Zierski, said Ukrainian troops had retreated to new positions further west as Russian forces rapidly approached Kurakhova and Pokrovsk. Elsewhere in the country, Ukrainian officials say Russian drones struck the Black Sea city of Mykolaiv, setting a hotel ablaze and damaging energy infrastructure. Russian media claims the strike targeted a shipyard where drones are assembled. President Volodymyr Zelensky thanked the US Congress for the billions of dollars worth of new weapons that are finally on their way to Ukraine, while also issuing a fresh plea for more air defences. We are interacting with our partners at all levels to achieve the level of efficiency in assistance that is needed not only to hold our positions, but also to disrupt Russia's war plans. I emphasize the need for Patriot systems. They are needed as soon as possible. Strong demands for a desperate situation. With Ukrainian forces vastly outnumbered and Kyiv struggling to recruit more soldiers, Zelensky is counting on fresh U.S. supplies to turn the tide of the war. Let's get more from Mike Martin. He's a senior fellow in war studies at King's College London. Good morning, Mike. New weapons supplies from the U.S. are on the way. Will they prove decisive in holding back the Russian advance? I, th I think this is the missing ingredient, this big weapons package from the US uh, for the last six months or eight months or so has been the missing ingredient for Ukraine. And I think we can see from the Russian response to its passing in the US Senate, they've tried to take as much territory as they can in the last couple of days until those weapon supplies come fully online. So I think the Russians are also aware that these, this package is very, very important for Ukraine's ability to fight. But there's only so much that uh, new weapons can do, can't they? I mean, isn't uh, another a bigger concern Ukraine's manpower needs? And uh, in that direction, are mobilization efforts coming a little too late? Yeah, well, I think you've uh, hit the nail on the head. Uh, and your viewers will probably remember recently in the last month or so, Ukraine has tightened up its mobilization laws um, to bring more people into the into the envelope who can be called up. And I think those uh, extra uh, bodies are going to be too late for this summer, because obviously once you've mobilised them, you then have to put them through about three months of training, basic training. And so for this summer, that will probably be too late. But I think what this does do is it sets Ukraine up for another year of war, but it sets Ukraine up with the manpower needed for 2025. Do you think Ukraine can push back uh, the Russians from the areas that they capture in this offensive? So this year, and this is really whilst Ukraine has been suffering from uh, a lack of supplies, Russia has made some small advances, um, particularly in the east. I think what the Ukrainians are going to be able to do is stabilise that front line uh, with these fresh supplies and b through rotating brigades and bringing in fresh brigades where they've you know, previously got troops that are tired. Um, I think that will be it for this summer, a stabilisation of the front line and then a utilisation of some of the weapons packages. There's cruise missiles, there's very long range missile systems. They'll be using those to hit targets 
deep behind Russia's rear, so in Crimea and oil terminals and the sorts of things that we've seen uh, within Russia and within Russian-occupied uh, Ukraine. Now, Alexander Sirsky, the commander-in-chief of Ukraine's armed forces, has been uh, remarkably honest about uh, where Ukraine finds itself currently in relation to the Russian advance. Why do you think he's being so honest and what is he trying to achieve with that honesty? I think there's two things. I think, you know, if you're Ukraine, you're, you're completely dependent upon the supplies of uh, European nations and America. And uh, you, this is a long-term game. And so you must have a very honest dialogue with your partners. And so that's the first thing he's trying to do is be realistic and honest so that his partners can see that actually supplying these weapons will have a benefit. It is difficult, but it will be a long haul, all that sort of stuff. And I think the other thing that he's doing here is he's fighting a, a part of the global media landscape. He needs to make sure that Ukraine is in the news. There are other wars going on, most notably in the Middle East with Israel and Gaza. And he needs to make sure that Ukraine uh, dominates news headlines because it keeps it front of mind uh, in capitals like London and Paris and Washington. We'll leave it there for the moment. Military analyst Mike Martin, thanks so much as always. Thank you.